Now, everybody wants to give the best possible pitch to their clients. The art of storytelling is a well-known sales tactic. It can be used to sell anything from cars to shampoo. But what if you have to sell something that isn't inherently interesting? What if it's just a product like a computer or some software? Our upcoming speaker session featuring Katerina Gajaskova will teach us how to make even the most boring products exciting by telling engrossing, attention-grabbing stories. Let's hear what Karina has to say on the topic, what Katerina, sorry, has to say on the topic, the art of storytelling in sales, selling stories, not products. Come on up, Katerina. Thank you so much for, uh, for the great introduction. And uh, as you can hear, I still have an Eastern European accent and I get a lot of comments on it actually, which I don't really mind, but there's a story connected to it, which I would like to um, start with it, share it with you. It's a little bizarre story, to be honest. Um, and I'm kind of embarrassed about it, but there's a point to it. Um, so I was in a bar eight years ago in Boston. It was my first time in the United States. And I was with two of my friends. And um, I told them in great excitement, like, oh, it's going to be a happy ending. And they looked at me with their eyes wide open, like, what the hell are you talking about? And I'm like, yeah, why not? Why shouldn't we be happy? <laughs> and uh, they're like, do you know what does it mean? And I was getting already kind of unsure, but I said, yeah, I guess. Um, so then she explained it to me, what does it mean in this culture? <laughs> and I was like, that's certainly not what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so yeah, my point is that even the exact same thing, in this case, it was an expression, can mean a completely different thing in different cultures. And this applies not only to expressions, but also to products, services, and, and symbols. So uh, they may make our stories um, to give them a totally different spin. Um, but yeah, where do I point it? With a technical issue? No? Yes? Okay, yeah. Oh, it goes back. Oh, the bigger one. This one. Okay, got it. Um, so here, I would like to uh, tell you what you can look for um, in the next 20 minutes. I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, explain what makes our audience less critical and thus lowers their defenses so they can open up more towards us. We also want to make sure that we understand how to increase the perceived market value till a point where the price can become pretty much irrelevant. And then we also want to keep in our mind that um, logic is never the deal breaker in sales. Um, so why do we tell stories in the first place? By the way, do you know what is the shortest story? The shortest story is a joke. And every joke has um, the same objective. There is a point to every joke. Hopefully, they, make, they will make you laugh. And there's one that comes to my mind, uh, which is two friends run into each other in a mall, in a shopping mall, and one asks uh, the other one, so what's up with your son? And the other says, well, um, he had to give up on his career because of fallen arches. So he replies, oh, so he's an athlete. And this one says, well, uh, no, he's an architect. So, um, yeah, our brains process visuals 60,000 times faster than text. So then you probably already figured out how the fallen arches look like, or maybe even the settings of them all. My question is, why shouldn't we speak our brain's native language? Um, because stories are basically visuals without the actual need of showing actual pictures. And um, I like this quote, it's very straightforward. And it says, never say a story without making a point and never make a point without saying a story. So uh, when we talk uh, to our friends, we tend to do it naturally. 
But when we talk in a business, um, we try to sell something, um, we, we try, we tend, or someone, most of the people tend to mess it up because they want it to, have, to, to be so perfect that uh, they forget about the point. So when, the next time when you talk to your, um, to your customers, just um, have a point in your mind. It's almost like having a vision for your conversation, where your conversation is heading. Um, and here I want to ask a question. What is the, um, what could be a possible outcome of selling 200 rate, random items with compelling stories versus when we compare um, the outcome of selling the same 200 items without any story? Um, Rob Walker in 2009, he's a journalist, uh, he had a very thought provoking um, question. What could be the impact of stories in sales? So what he did, um, he bought 200 random items on eBay, and then he convinced um, 200 authors to write compelling stories to these items. The outcome was very um, interesting. He was amazed and I was amazed uh, by, the, by the outcome. Um, so he, he, he bought each item for about a dollar. Um, and then with these stories, he uh, increased the per perceived market value to about, uh, to, to be exact, to $3,612. But you may ask how? How is it possible that a story could, um, could increase the market value so much? So the first secret is to get your customers emotionally involved because the more emotionally involved they are, the less critical they are and the less objectively observant they become. And a beautiful example, very descriptive example is the feeling of being in love. I believe everyone in this room has already been at least once in their life in love. Do you remember how was it when you were, or maybe you still are in love? It is a beautiful feeling, isn't it? Uh, when you are in love, you love everything about this person. They are so amazing. Uh, our critical thinking is, is on vacation during that period. So for example, slurping the tea out loud. Oh, it's so cute. Um, walking in front of the TV in underwear. Oh my gosh, that's so sexy. But fast forward to 13 months, which is according to a research, the average number of months that people fall out of love. And now suddenly the exact same things start to be annoying. You're watching the TV, you sit down and you're watching the TV and suddenly you hear someone slurping and you say, excuse me, I can't hear what they're saying on TV or you're reading your book and someone is slurping, say, excuse me, could you, could you ring the tea as a normal person? Um, or while watching the TV and, so, and, and they're passing in front of the TV and it's, honey, I can't see. Suddenly it's so annoying. It's the exact same thing, but now our critical thinking is back from its vacation. So uh, now we can see the things differently. And the good news is that there is a technique in sales that can send our critical thinking back to vacation. And that is what I'm going to show you. <clears throat> and that, that is exactly how Rob could sell a 99 cents ceramic bare salt shaker for $36 by adding a story about a, a, a poker game. Um, the same thing, he sold a $1 pink horse for $104.5 by adding a heartbreaking story about a little girl. So the stories really do have power. And um, the, most emo the more emotionally involved um, our prospects become, the less critical they are, and the less important the price is. Now, to answer the question how to get them involved, you, you might be like, okay, okay, I get it. I have to get them involved, but uh, emotionally involved, but how? And I would like to stop here for a second and tell you a story from 15 years ago. Uh, I was in a, on a weekend workshop from the student organization called ISEC to sharpen our skills. And I remember it like it was yesterday. We were waiting for lunch at the table. It was raining outside. And suddenly I received a phone call from my mother. 
And she told me, um, as she told me sad news. She said, uh, our kitten was torn to pieces by our dog. Uh, my phone almost fell out of my hand. I went to the bathroom to cry. Uh, when I came back, everyone was already finishing up their lunch and getting ready for the next assignment, which was a sales assignment. I didn't mind skipping my lunch because I didn't have appetite after receiving the, uh, those news. Um, but I was thinking like, how, how, how will I sell anything in the, this state of mind? And we had to sell a used roll of toilet paper to any stranger on the street. So, uh, and I was thinking, how could anyone buy a used roll of toilet paper for more than 50 cents? But my friend started coming back with $1 sale, $5 sale, and someone sold it for $10. And I couldn't just, I was like, how? How is it even possible? When it was my turn, and I finally found someone in the street who would actually talk to me. Um, I told her, thank you so much for taking your time and listening to me. Uh, I'm actually supposed to sell you this toilet paper roll. And she started to laugh. She was laughing because the toilet paper wasn't only like half of the roll, but it was also wet because it was raining outside. Um, so, and I was like, yeah, um, I'm supposed to sell you this, but I can't really think of a reason why you, sh you would need a wet half roll of a toilet paper other than maybe wipe off your shoes before getting into your car so that all that mud from the street won't get into your car rug. And I shared with her um, my story, like what happened right before, uh, right before getting this sales assignment. And I told her, um, I, and I apologize. I'm like, I'm really sorry, but I'm not in a sales mood right now. Um, I just received this horrible news, how my kitten passed away, how my dog torn her into pieces and, and I just can't really concentrate and, and all that. Um, but at the end, I asked her, so what do you think? how much um, of a value has this toilet paper? Could you possibly buy it? And then to my surprise, she takes out her purse. And I was like, my eyes wide open. And then she takes out a bill. And now I'm already giving you a hint. It was more than 50 cents because it's a bill. What do you think? For how much did I sell, quote unquote, that, the toilet paper? She bought it for $50, five zero. And um, I couldn't believe, now I'm not, uh, the sales pitch was horrible, so I'm not really recommending it. But the point is that she connected emotionally. I got her emotionally involved in my story by increasing her dopamine, making her anticipate the things and visually um, imagine what was going to happen next. So by increasing her dopamine level, she um, paid more attention to me uh, she was more focused. Um, her, her creativity increased. She, she found reasons why to buy it for me. Um, I also increased her oxytocin level by uh, creating, um, uh, by, by, by connecting with her, by creating empathy. So um, she felt more trust towards me. She felt more bonded. De definitely, I increased her generosity. <laughs> And, um, and last but not least, I also increased her endorphin levels, which uh, by making her laugh, so she was more relaxed and, th and thus could pay more attention to me or to my story, what I was selling. Uh, and the good news is that now, so we tend to do this naturally with friends, um, and I'm sure everyone can tell good stories and everyone can sell, even though we may fear because of, of the fear of rejection. And that was my case too. I thought I could not sell anything, um, much less the toilet paper. But when we think of a great relationship that you like, it might be with your kids, spouse, friends, whoever you choose. Why do you like that relationship? Maybe because you can relate. You can tell good stories to each other. You can have good chit chats, maybe even gossips. 65% of our conversations are stories. And um, now we can consciously apply these tips also in our business storytelling. 
Um, so we want to increase uh, the dopamine, oxytocin, and endorphin levels and get them emotionally involved to our story where the price then become pretty much irrelevant. Um, and then a perfect example actually um, would be Air Jordan sneakers. I don't know if you've heard about it, but, um, and I can, I can uh, switch to the next slide. Air Jordan sneakers are um, the most expensive pair of sneakers, Air Jordan 12, the flu game, were sold for $104,000. Um, obviously, the price became pretty much irrelevant for the buyer because they got emotionally so involved and then the symbolic value was so high and so clear that it just uh, diminished the importance of the price. In the beginning, I said 85% of a sale is subconscious, happens on a subconscious level. That leaves only 15% to our uh, rational part of the brain, which again only confirms what we've already said, that the sale is largely emotional. Um, think about when you are in a store in the pastry section and you suddenly see that piece of cake talking to you and you know it's not good for your health, you know you don't want to eat it, but then suddenly you think in all those moments who you ate it with, how it felt, the taste, the smell, where you were, where you ate it, the good times. So you decide to buy it and then you reason it, emotion uh, you reason it logically. Oh, but it was on sale. Or um, I can go and um, I can go running after, afterwards or work out. So we buy based on our emotions and then we reason it with our logic. Uh, Jurgen Klarik, we, who is um, a researcher in neuromarketing, uh, uh, says that 85% of a sale is on, um, happens on a subconscious level. And he bases his theory on symbolic value and codes for the reptilian brain. Symbolic value, he believes that anything and everything that has um, value for us is higher than the price just because for what it means to us, what it is for us, rather than the price itself. Think about a necklace or that you got from your parents or a present that you got from your loved ones, uh, an engagement ring while still in love, or just the um, Air Jordan sneakers, which I mentioned. And then uh, the codes for the reptilian brain, people, so this part of the brain is, um, is responsible it's, uh, for our sort of survival instincts. And uh, so breathing, feeling thirsty, hungry, the need for reproduction. He thinks that this part of the brain uh, is responsible or can influence our decisions in, uh, for 55%. Uh, and the other 30% accounts for the culture. Remember when I told you in the beginning my, my, my story? Uh, so the culture definitely has an impact how we perceive things. Um, the things we buy, it may be products or services or stories. Um, now, you might be thinking, but how do we get to that part of the brain? How do we activate the reptilian brain? Um, it lives in the present and it's controlled by impulsiveness, but it reacts very well uh, to, to the feelings. If we can evoke in it the feeling of happiness, pleasure, control, dominate, um, uh, union of the tribe, security, power, um, and obviously uh, reproduction. So I would like to, I would like to analyze um, and give some examples from, from well-known brands and businesses. How do they use stories and symbolic value in combination uh, with targeting the message to the reptilian brain? Tiffany's jewelry. Um, they sell jewelry um, a, at a lot higher price, yet the, the quality is comparable. But in fact, they don't sell jewelry. They sell exclusivity. They sell prestige. And that's how they target their audience. Coca-Cola, they sell happiness. They even say, open the happiness. And now we see this, um, the commercial with, with kids and Santa and everyone is so happy and excited. 
and, and it's just a happy environment. Funeral services, they sell tranquility, peace. Tourism, they sell exploration, uh, trips, exploration, something new, uh, luxury hotels, freedom, um, status, how, and uh, power resulting from that. Luxury watches, luxury watches, they don't just sell watches. You can, you can tell what's the time on a $20 watch. It will tell you the same time. But in this case, they are, they are selling power. They are selling prestige um, and control and, and, and the feeling of that I can dominate. Um, kitchen designs, it is for women. Um, it's their territory and it's for the union of the tribe. Whether the women use the kitchen or not, they tend to select larger kitchens just because it's their territory. And it's, it's, it's a symbol for them, for them how good of a mother they are. Um, I can think of other examples such as um, the eggs body spray. Uh, they had these funny commercials and they are, uh, they, their message is how to become irresistible for women. So power, control, the, even the need for reproduction. Um, alcohol, they don't sell liquor. They sell fun memories and fun times for the next days. Um, so yeah, the, we're running out of time. So it's time for the wrap up. I hope you, um, you'll learn something new. You'll enjoy it, uh, my presentation. And I hope that you will um, take at least these, these three points uh, with you. When you are gonna say a story, always make a point. Get your audience emotionally involved and then target the message to the reptilian brain through, the, through a strong symbolic value, just as we discussed in the examples. Um, all right, so thank you very much for your attention. Um, it was it was an honor being here, and I also re uh, prepared um, three storyline templates, which uh, with the structure, fill in the blank templates, and are also uh, successful at copies. So, um, or you can just scan the QR to uh, QR code to connect with me. I'd be more than happy happy to connect with you, and maybe even find ways to collaborate. So, thank you very much, and yeah. And remember, I would like to close with this. Remember, everyone has a story. So I wish you successful storytelling. Thank you. Thank you.